I came back for good because I got really scared and I thought I was going to die. And when I came back here, I didn't like anybody. Uh, and I was going to the AP office on, around Rockefeller Center, it's right across the street from the Time Life building. And I seen a Vietnam veteran walking across the street when I was home who had uh, part of his leg missing. He was on crutches and decorated, you know, and had his uniform on. And a cabbie almost killed him. And I walked into the Associated Press office and, and I looked at these guys and I said, there's all these fat guys and these people just sitting here cranking away at their typewriters and nobody cared. How does it change me personally? Chalk and cheese. I mean, I went in like a lamb and I've come out like a, I came out like a, a wolf with no brain. Um, I was specifically lucky because I was declared dead on arrival at a hospital, having had 200 cc's of my brain removed. And Vietnam virtually killed me, left me in a, a critical condition, to say the least. Left me <coughs> disillusioned, broken, and spun out. I grew up in Vietnam, and I, it, to this day, I am fascinated by it. I, People keep saying, you know, we've got to get past it. The reality is there is a certain part of our development that was arrested by Vietnam, and we'll never get past it. I lay in bed at night and see those images coming back to me quite clear. Um, I can smell the blood. I can smell the burning villages, and I can smell... The, the, the kind of pollution of Saigon, it's never left me. The whole thing is like as if I've got a kind of damaged skin that's there. But I asked for it. I, I volunteered to go. Nobody sent me against my will. So I can't blame anybody, really.